Hi everyone, how are you? Do you remember that map from one of the streams? So this is a burning piece of wood. And it burns on a shader, yes. But as you can see, all of that magic happened because I painted it. Not mesh paint, but... Ooh. Where is Vertex painting Unreal Engine 5? Come on! And I closed some window. Huh. Okay. Like, paint. Please. Huh. But here I can see it. Okay, I can't paint, but I can see it. So, I painted the mesh. Black, because white is default. To tell Unreal where to burn. And as you can see... As you can see, it's burning right there, in the most intense way. And it's not burning here, because here it's not painted. Right, so that was one of the streams. Um, as always, you can find it on techarpaint.com. You go somewhere there. Here it is, burning wood material. So it's not that long, I think it's about 35 minutes. Uh, oh, Piet Nashkin, hey! Haven't seen you in a long time. And hi Roy, hi Adder. Uh, so, today's goal is a bit different, or it's about expanding this. Because this is all good, it's burning, right? But now take a look. I can, I'll copy that mesh. Copy that mesh. All of them burn in the same manner. Of course, I could probably disable nanite and paint, you know, single instance, different vertex color, but still it's out of my control. It animates, it's like ramps up, it's becoming, you know, uh, hotter and hotter, then it's turned to ash and restart. So of course it's a debug preview, right? But where to go from here? Debug preview won't suffice. So of course we can freeze the animation at some frame. Let's say we could stop there, right? And just keep the and just keep the animation of the of the inside going on in a loop. Of course, that's one of the solutions. However, I have a better idea. What if we were able to provide some points and tell it where to burn just by moving that point, that single vector or single transform. Okay, so that's the goal for today. Uh, that no matter the shape, without any painting, just putting points either on the map or in real time will make it burn in a very specific place. Oh, hi Sadokun, how are you? Seven people here so far, so I guess I will have to repeat what I just said. Um, but anyway. Hmm, let's delete them again. Lighting needs to be rebuilt. No. Where is the word settings? Force, no recomputed lighting. Yes. The layout is weird, you know? Everything is hidden. Layout default. Okay, but now, now I don't have word settings. Word settings here. Okay, and content drawer shouldn't be on the bottom. It should be on the left. Okay, better. Now this should be a list. Thank you. And, and that's it. Let me save that. So save layout as Oscar. Description. My favorite layout. Cool. Oh, well. hi, Emmanuel. Okay. So let's get to work. This is, paint, uh, this is burning automatically. Let's make it burn under specified places. 
I will show you one thing on Discord. Because on Discord, uh, um, where was it? In Unreal Engine? Let me just search. Search um, direction. Yeah, this. Okay. Okay. So Tasana J tried this tutorial actually. And I'm always like super happy to see when somebody, you know, takes this knowledge and does something with it. Because Tasana J found that, okay, this is all good. But what if, what if it starts to burn and then I decide to move the object? So you can probably see a problem because the pattern is very subtle. But let me increase that and you will see what they meant by this direction. Um, okay, let's edit material. Materials here. Uh, I may duplicate that material. Burning wood. Um, Better. Okay. Let's place it on the asset. And now. Wait. No, it's good. Uh, where's the burning? Animated noise, exactly. Mm. So let me increase the size of that mask. Hit noise size will be... 50 and the pattern the pattern the crevices uh, they are here okay let's remap them I actually need to see what I'm doing here okay I don't like the whole transition where is it artistic curve of heat strength over time exactly so let me just set it as a single value. Let's move step. What is it? Um, what does it do? Simulation time. Debug preview of simulation time. Okay. Like that. Is it good? Uh-huh. Now I increase the simulation time. Perfect. So as you can see, this is what I meant at the beginning, that you can disable this whole beautiful animation, set a single value, and like freeze the transition at a given phase. Uh, here it is. So now I want to remap that to have this animation more visible, because I want to show you the problem with it. Maybe like that. I don't remember which was which. Ho oh ho! Zero seven. Okay. That was intense. Why is it pink? What the hell? Why is that pink color? When I increase that. I don't saturate it. Oh god. So I found the bug. Oh, uh, maybe. 0 0.2. Apply. Okay. 1.4. Nice. Okay. So now it's maybe too right uh where is the intensity let me find that color hit to color 20 v emission brightness wow great or no two and a half and we just decrease exposure okay, okay good now we can see what's going on there is an animation Oh, uh, animation, heat anim speed. Let's add some more contrast to that animation if possible. 
Hit noise strength. Oh yeah. Hey, this material is pretty good. <laughs> Everything is configurable. Okay. You can see what's going on. Maybe let's just decrease the speed because it's go very it goes very very fast. Uh, speed, speed, height, anim speed. Perfect. Okay, everything's there. Minus zero point six. Okay, you can see it going up, right? Beautifully moving upwards. However, look at this. I take that. I move that. Okay, still no problems. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Maybe it's good. Uh, where the light texture? Where's the word position? Oh, so I already fixed that on the stream. Hmm. That's bad because I wanted to show you what is the problem. Okay, let's detach that. So this is the classic word aligned texture node. Okay. It projects your texture in 3D automatically without UVs. Very good node. So-called triplanar mapping. In Unreal it's called differently, but the biggest triplanar mapping. Okay, here it is, not animated though. And if you started to move the object, the noise will stay in place. Because this is, it is projecting in word space. So as you can see, you can see the issue. Object moves, but the noise stays. So then, of course, you take your absolute word position. And let's say with the same problem, but with animation, you just add, you just add heat animation speed multiplied by three axes, some axes. So let's say zero in X, a slight movement in Y and biggest movement in Z, so B, right? So for example, we start with just the Z. One per second. Uh, multiplied by heat and speed. You multiply that. And you add this value multiplied by time. Time. So time. Sorry. Multiplied by time. So you know, three dimensions. Uh, and you add this, this offset to the word position. So again, you can supply your own word position for this word aligned texture. So this is just word position, standard thing. And this is word position plus time multiplied by zero, zero, one. Okay, nothing. Maybe this is too small. Maybe this should be not one, but 100. Uh, nothing. Not at all. Why? Time, ah, time. No, time works in editor. What the hell? Wait a second. This was this. Multiplied by this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Should work. Now it works. What? Ah, because I set absolute word position excluding material shader offset. Maybe there was some circular dependency. Anyway, to the position I add the time multiplied by this, you know, the different speed in different axes. Uh, and then it moves, right? Moves. Uh, but of course, if the object moves, you can see I can even reach the velocity of that noise and match with it. And of course, in the opposite direction, I kind of miss it. So, you know, it's problematic, right? Because imagine this is some gameplay object. You start to play with it. You push it or something, and the entire noise goes crazy. So what we did at the end of the stream, apparently, because I forgot, sorry, was 
the thing I wanted to show you today at the beginning. Meaning, this position is transformed to local position of that object. So, transform. Ah, transform position. That's important. Transform position from word space to local space. And only then it is added here. So the result will be all, almost the same. Scale would change it. It looks otherwise the same. But now I move my object and the noise moves together with it. However, it looks good, but there's one problem, which Tasana J beautifully explained on Discord. And by the way, I really appreciate such, you know, digging into my stuff, like trying to improve it, trying to counter the argument. I really uh, appreciate that. So what they found is that now if we rotate that object, it will of course go towards this direction. Right. So the same if you changed here to local, you can observe the vector now, the blue vector, this one. So now the up goes here, 45 degrees. Now the up goes sideways, right? Not good. So what can we do? Instead of transforming the entire position, what could we do? We could preserve the, let's say, origin, but not the rotation. So, uh, instead of transforming the entire word position, let me just take the object pivot, object pivot point, right, uh, returns the object pivot point in word space, works only in vertex shader, in vertex shader, uh, actor position word space, better, okay, and I transform this position, no, I just subtract, subtract this position from word position of the of the vertex or, or the pixel. So uh, this thing, this pivot, I just subtract it. So whatever, for example, this object is somewhere, right? It's, I don't know, minus 2000 to the left and something to the top. So if I subtract its pivot in word space from each vertex position, I got this vertex position re relative to the pivot, uh, but I don't care about rotation. Uh, so that's the difference with tra just transforming position. Transform will also transform the rotation and scale. This, only the position. So let's try, let's see the difference. Currently it goes there. And now I will just subtract it, replace that stuff, and let's see. Perfect. Take a look. I move the object. The noise stays kind of connected to the object, but it moves up. It moves upwards. Let me disable snapping, you will see that better. Right? So no matter the rotation, this goes up. So of course we still have a problem of the noise moving when we rotate, but it's not that bad. Like the most, the worst thing is when I move it. And this is solved now because it's relative to the pivot position. Okay? But it always moves upwards. So the difference is I didn't transform the entire position. I just subtracted actor's word uh, pivot from that position without touching rotation and scale. So that's how we how we can do it. And is it how that was done? No. Okay. So this is an improvement. Perfect. Um, so I guess that 
this can be just replaced. And now it's rightfully called wood better. Okay. Uh, let's increase that space. Moves up. Delete. Okay. Subtracted. And this goes towards position, I believe. Let's try. Let's try. Okay, seems to work. Animated word space noise, not necessarily word space. Animated noise. Mm. Make the position relative to pivot. Pick the object. But keep rot uh, but keep the direction and scale global. Uh-huh. That's it. What's going on in the chat in the meantime? Oh, Sadokon is trying to implement a new asset integration without any documentation available. Walking C++ is not fun. Hoping my day is better. My day wasn't better. My yesterday day was better. Today was insanely bad because I tried to compile landscape without success. Landscape shader for like three hours straight. And I still don't know what's wrong. Probably I have too many uh, texture samplers somewhere, but of course Unreal won't tell me because I have it packed in material functions. So it looks, oh, material function? Nah. Give me a break. I won't look inside. No, no. So it just gives me the checker, like grayscale checker. Material did compile. That's it. Yeah, there's no accumulation buffer uh, in time, in shaders, says Sudokun. So what they mean is <coughs> the time here is the time since, I don't know what exactly, start of the engine, start of Unreal, probably in seconds. It can be paused during the game. Oh, Dimitri Maxim, welcome. Thanks for following. Uh, but yeah, this time, like, you can't accumulate effects because shaders are evaluated every frame. So it's not that shader is drawing something and then drawing something on top. Shader, like the entire mesh, is being redrawn 60 times per second. Imagine it's cleared, drawn, cleared, drawn. So only current moment in time exists. It doesn't know about the previous frame, doesn't know about the, of course, next frame. There is no history. You can do history in shaders, but it's expensive, uh, but still good by using render targets. So if you go to techrta.com, you have this render targets one and render targets two. Uh, there are, I explained to you in quite a clunky way, but still. Oh no, this is advertisement. Shader dev. Okay. So I showed you that shader can, that you can use render targets to draw a quad onto a texture. And if you do it in a proper blend mode or reading the previous texture result, you can additively draw into this texture. So this is the most useful thing of render targets. But actually, where is it? Uh, Wait a second. Where is the actual drawing? Okay, here. So look, uh, when I hold mouse, I'm uh, reading the previous result of the render target, so the actual state of the texture, current state of the texture. Draw, like add P 
pixels on it. So this material you now reads this texture, there was something on top, writes back. Of course, there are two textures, I just swapped because you can't read and write to the same one in Unreal. Mm. And yeah. And then this is actual memory of a shader. But it's not within the shader, of course. It's related to render target and blueprint. So yeah, on techart8.com you can find this render targets too. And by the way, um, typical reminder, patreon.com, techart8. If you want to see all the stream recordings, uh, then the middle tire and the upper tire are for you. And thank you for all of you who already are there. As you can see on Discord, there is quite a lot, so I'm really grateful. And also, another news, take a look, because on techartay.com I have this products section. And you may know this course, Techartay Math Essentials. But now there is a new button, buy on Udemy. So some of you may prefer Udemy, or your employers may prefer Udemy. So now you can get them here. Uh, so yeah, 20 people so far started, because I uploaded a couple days ago. I think less than a week. So these are the same math essentials. And I explain dot product. And a lot of stuff where you can use that. Like a silhouette glow, of course. But also how to make a ghost. Also how to make procedural snow. And I try to go as fast as possible. So it, to make this course really brief. Uh, it's one hour, four minutes. So for example, here is the dot. Here is the dot. So you have the silhouette, uh, the ghost, and the snow, and a lot more. But also, I explain the actual maths. So this is a course that you know not only shows you the shader, the effect, but also teaches you the proper uh, technicalities behind it. So I don't skip on theory. Though, as you can see, I keep it really short. Linear interpolation may surprise you, because most of you, I think, know what it is. But then you have stuff like, for example, remapping a for loop index into a 0-1 range, uh, using it to create a helix of a DNA with location and rotation interpolation. So yeah, math essentials can be found at techartate.com uh, in the products. And yeah, render targets is for you, Sadokun, if you want to have memory in shaders. Oh, and this says there's one note about memory. It's called previous frame switch. Previous frame switch. It can tell you if you get, for example, actor position or something. Uh, yeah, I think it's mostly for the stuff that moves in the shader and we want to provide velocity. Mm. But actually, Adder, can you tell me what can we do with it? For forward position offset. Okay, so I calculate my, let's say, word position offset it for the current frame, put it here. Ah, and then subtracting some delta time from this, like one frame. I can put it there, so the blur is correct. Okay. So it does. It just goes into whatever I really want, like also albedo, word position and stuff, right? Okay. <laughs> Adam doesn't know how to use it in practice. Maybe tricky. Probably simpler than we think, but yeah. Ah, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Discord link, Discord link. Let me invite people. Discord. Okay. Uh, so going back to this, we have stabilized the position, which is good. So now about the uh, mask. This mask is painted. Let's get rid of that painted mask. I don't want that. Uh, where is it? Mask. Read heat intensity from the painted data. No. Zero. Apply. 
There is no fire. Sorry. Turn it off. Uh, however, we can make a blueprint. We can make a blueprint. By the way, what's wrong with this? Oh, okay. Good. Let's make a BP. Um, can I make a BP out of mesh? I think I should. Uh -huh. There was an option like that, right? Convert to blueprint. Oh, here. New subclass, child actors, harvest components. Yes, harvest components. Default will be actor. And location, burning wood. BP, burning asset. Good. Really nice engine. Very advanced. User friendly. Okay. Uh, so now look. Let's say I want to have a point around which the fire will burn. What can I do? I can create a dynamic material instance. Mm, this is probably what typically people do. So in the construction script, they take this thing. Uh, they do get material like this, and they do create dynamic material instance, okay? And to the same component, they do set material and set it to the newly created uh, dynamic material instance. So what does it do? It allows you to tweak parameters per mesh, no, per instance of the material. So the goal is to replace the static material that's, let's say, used in three different assets and make it special for this specific one. Let's say we have two of them, right? You can create material instance and then start tweaking some parameters of that material, like set vector parameter uh, value. Heat speed value something okay but that creates the so-called draw call meaning that the gpu can draw both material both meshes at once in one go two meshes is not a problem 100 meshes is a problem because each of them would have a separate actual material that's not good so there is a better option let's get rid of that stuff and instead um let's open this material uh where's material here there's read heat intensity so we will read a point a point will be vector vector parameter so let's say fire origin okay and there'll be a scalar one fire radius radius so now, how to calculate the fire mask, radial mask, from that origin? What I mean is I want to do something like, like this, okay? So some origin, some point, and around it uh, a mask of fire. So there's fire origin, there's radius, let's say one meter by default. Um, and I want to calculate distance, distance, distance from what? Distance from uh, local position to that point, like this. Point is zero, 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 uh, local position, so from pivot, ah, excluding offsets, yeah. Uh, so there's this distance growing. Let me put it here. But of course it will grow becoming stronger outwards. Also, it will grow very fast. So you're able to see that. It won't be pleasant. <laughs> it's super huge values, okay? So first what I need to do is I need to clump that between 0 and 1. It can be also done with a saturate node. It clumps between 0 and 1. 
let's put it here. It will stop at one, but everything will be one, except for the very pivot. So what now? Now I want to remap that to create a radial mask. Remap value range like this. Um, let me start the remapping uh, so that it remaps from some start to some end so that the result is between, for example, 0 and 1. So whatever range converted to 0 to 1. So what I want to have is that currently from pivot I want uh, this oh sorry I want this point to be zero right and gradually coming towards one at the pivot here so I want a gradient of sorts mm. So, low, zero, should start at radius, like this. And high should start at distance of zero, meaning my pivot. Okay, so remapping that range, this distance of vertex to fire origin into uh, zero to one. And my maximum distance fire radius is 100 centimeters. Let's see what mask does it produce. Like much better, right? Pivot is here. This fire origin. The mask is growing outwards. Now I can increase the radius to 200. And you can see it growing like this. Oh. Okay. But of course, fire origin is zero. So what if... I increase that by moving the B I just move this origin upwards let me move it to 100 yeah it's on top or in the middle 200 too high okay so now I, I moved it by one meter up but of course this is a preset value if I created a separate material instance either manually or here create dynamic material instance then of course I could set it per uh, component but it create more materials that's not what I want so there's one improvement we can make actually because as you can see the mask is very smooth it goes from fire radius to zero so full gradient I want it to go let's say from 140 to 70 so to be sharper so let me multiply that by a fire mm, hard, fire radius hardness or fire mask hardness and look at this if it's zero i will still get zero so it's cool i can delete that because i will still get zero however if this hardness is like half then I will get uh, 70. If this hardness is 09, I will get remap from 141 to 120 or something. Okay, so let me show you. Now I have actual hardness here. Oh, like this, right? And now by reducing this, I'm getting the feather, the softness. Okay, because it controls one of these points on the gradient where it stops, where it ends. So hardness of half or zero six could be okay. Okay, so now only this remains. This is a static thing. Fortunately, there's another type of parameter, and I devoted an entire video to it, and I will recommend it on every. Uh, <laughs> every twitch because i like to remind about that there is interactive materials video on tercard8.com and i explain something called custom primitive data it's here on the bottom use custom primitive data you enable that 
and it changes. It's replaced by four indices, zero, one, two, three. What does it mean? Custom primitive data is data that is specific per every mesh in the world. Every single mesh component in the world gets such data. And there is 32 slots unused by default. So empty, just zero. And here, by specifying this index, you say which one do you want. If it's a scalar, like this, and you use custom primitive data, it takes one index, because there's one float. So you can say 1, uh, 20, 32, it's okay. I think 36 is the max. 35, yeah. 36 of them. Uh, however, a vector has 1, 2, 3, 4 floats. So it takes index 0, 1, 2, 3 if you provide 0. If you provide 5, it will take 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? So does it automatically? Very good. You can also provide channel names, but they are not binding. So these are not like per name parameter. They are per index, per number. So be very careful because many materials may use the same index for different things. So ideally make some table in Google spreadsheet or whatever, where you will just put these numbers and say what they mean. Here you can do channel names. But as I said, they are not obligatory. Nothing respects them, it's just info. Okay, so at index zero, I will provide fire origin. Okay, so in my burning asset, burning as, uh, as you can see, it returned to zero because um, this custom primitive data are zero by default, black. So now, it's much better. I don't have to create materials. That's the advantage of custom primitive data. One material, many assets, okay, many assets. And let me just select a random point within its bounding box. So, or no, just within, within bounding box. Uh, so mesh, get bounds, yes. They are local bounds so within that mesh, within its local space. And random point in bounding box from stream. And stream will be a variable per mesh. Here, random stream. So random stream gives you predictable, deterministic uh, random values. So it's not random per frame, not random per, uh, you know, start of Unreal Engine. It's just stable random. So random frame. You just you do nothing with it. Nothing. Just create a variable like that. Random stream. Drag and drop. Put it here. That's all. And now you can get a random point in that bounding box. So minimum, maximum. Ah, it uh, wants center and half size. Jesus. So center is max uh, is the average average vector average uh, verb. Okay. So is in the middle between these two center half and half size is just one of those, but absolute, Oops. right or no? No, half size, what is half size? Uh, I don't know, half size, ah, I know what it is, should be the same, I guess, but absolute? I'm not sure. Or I'm making this up. No. Mm. Wait, this is... Uh, Icarist asks if random stream is like random from a seed. Exactly. And you select the variable. There is, even if you compile it, 
there is the seed, initial seed here. Okay. Uh, wait a second. I need to display this point. I'm sorry. Uh, my math power is poor right now. So draw the box sphere. Small sphere, like healthy, big, mm, duration one frame, or one in. Okay, let me draw first the center. So static mesh component, transform, mm, get relative, transform. Mm -mm. Get words first. Okay. And let me transform this point. Transform point. Transform location. To word. Okay. Let's see what it draws. Nothing. Huh. Ah, I'm getting the random point. That's not what I wanted. I want to get the the half point, the local bounds. Actually, let's display all of them. Let's display first the minimum. Then, with another color, the max. And then, with yet another color, the center. Okay, let's see. Nothing. Actually, why? Ah, because I didn't transform these points. God. Transform, transform, transform. This point, that one, and that one. Because drawing sphere is in word space. Okay, now maybe. Ha! Huh. Duration, fantastic. One second. Okay. Too big, I say. 20. 20. The new guy, welcome. Welcome to the chat. Okay, so see, you ha we have the minimum bound and the maximum. So if we draw show bounds, you will get what it shows. Visualize, where are bounds? They were there, right? Advanced bounds. Okay, so we can see the bounds, the blue. If I compile. Okay, not these bounds actually, but the bounds of the component, the corner of the red thing and the other corner of the red thing right the corners of the of the bounds of the component now the middle is somewhere in the middle probably yeah so now what i want um <clears throat> is i want to get a random point between those two corners mm. right so the half size will just be, okay, I know what it will be. The half size will be the absolute difference between, I'm subtract, um, between this average and the max. So sub this from this. And absolute right. Uh, what now? Now, no, it's half size. Okay. Now let's see this random point if it's good or not. Here and draw it. So getting the local bounds, getting the average between two 
min and max corners, subtracting from the max corner and making absolute is the half size of that box. Let's see. Okay, I'm getting a random point, different for every instance. As you can see, it lands in a different place. If I change the seed in this random stream, the seed is here, like 9,000, no, 2,000. It's there. 2,000 again, 200. Different place, 100. Okay, let me compile. Mm. Wait, it lands in the same spot? What? I wanted a random point. Uh, probably the seed has to be randomized on start. So, uh, a random seed, random stream. Uh, set initial. Reset random. This is to a specific number. I want to a uh, random number. Huh. How to do it? I want a totally random seed. Mm. I can get maybe the object position or something like that. Get set seed. But yeah, I want to set it differently per instance automatically. Oh, can I get some hash? There's hash function? No. Oh. Huh. That's weird. How to do it? Uh, you know what I want. I want to have a different seed for every single one. Mm. That's still in a predictable manner. So let's say seed randoms oh create a new random seed for a random stream thank you <laughs> great uh okay let's try now yep but now it's not working because it's different for, for every compilation it's bad oh god Set random stream seed. Mm -hmm. But getting, for example, actor location. Get actor location. Orkkus. Hey, I recently discovered your YouTube channel and found it very useful. Thank you for putting all that knowledge for free online. It helped to clear some things out. If it's not a problem, I would like to know your opinion about something. Sure, feel free. I'm here to, you know, we do stuff, but we also chat, so definitely. Uh, there's a pity, there's no hash function, you know. I want to take actor location in word space and get a random number, that's it. But apparently it's not that easy. Make noise, perly noise. Uh, perly noise, 1D. Maybe that's expensive, I don't know. Maybe not. So let's get uh, average of this. Or get... Mm, let's get... Huh. There's no average of vector. Get vector array average. Find the average of an array of vectors. Why average array of vectors? I want just average of its components. Component. Hmm. Okay. Let me do this. Split. And just add and add and add and out of this I'm going to get a noise value and convert it to a new seed 
So multiply that by one thousand two integer truncate. Mm -hmm. So all this will be create comment. It will be set a random based on actor location good let's try now okay they have this in a different spot but in a stable manner so every time I compile it's in the same place so what I did is I took the position of the actor and just took a random number out of it by, you know, adding its position, multiplying by 1000 and putting it through Perlin. That's it. I got a random seed, but predictable. Deterministic seed. Okay, so now we're getting this random point. That's perfect. So instead of drawing this point, I would like to um, take the static mesh. Sorry, now finally getting to the material. Yes. Pay attention. Get static mesh component. And now in the material we have enabled in this parameter custom primitive data, meaning it's per mesh, not per material now. Custom primitive data are per mesh. Um, and I do set vector, set custom primitive data, vector free. Like this. Vector free will give me the position. So this thing now goes into value data index zero because in the material I also set primitive data index zero okay compile and take a look setting this mm. hold on a second something's wrong <laughs> because the origin should be here and isn't apparently ah because it's after transformation so i should do it before transformation almost <laughs> it did something but the location is incorrect mm, and i think i know why because I did this random point in a bounding box from stream. And what I should do now is I should add this uh, pivot again, I think. So maybe that's, that's not a good idea, or is it? Um, wait. Random point is in the box. So having that box here let's say here's the bounding box right and we're getting a random point somewhere within that box some point however the actual pivot is there so these points are not relative to the pivot and they should be instead they are relative to the bounds so this is bound center and they are relative to this bound center so what we need to do is we need to subtract the bound center from that point oh uh, so again all this bound center is here actually let's make it a variable uh, let's make it a variable, maybe. Mm. So bounce center, mesh bounce center, that. So let let's make it a sequence. Uh, all of this should be a sequence. Sequence. First, 
we set the seed. Okay. Then we calculate this math. This is not needed right now. So mesh component, get local bounds. Mm. Now getting the half of this. So the center, and now let's set this center here. This is the second thing we do. Now about this extents. Uh, actually, the size of that box will be just, yeah, the difference of these two. Like min minus max or max minus min. Uh, what? Like the distance between them by half. Right. Right. Or no. No, size is not distance. Just the difference between them and absolute. Like this. I think that's more true. Okay, and this will be, oh sorry, this is mesh bound center, let's make a new one, mesh bound half size, set, so wait, if we have this point, let's say this is uh, one, 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 this is minus one, minus one, minus one. Mm. Then the axis is of length two. So what we need is from the max, we should subtract the min and then divide. So from the max, we subtract the minimum, get absolute of this and then divide by half. So this is actually what, uh, what Sneaky Turtle wanted. Wait, uh, literal load two. Don't say meat hanged. Oh no. That looks bad. Mm, okay, divide by this. Yeah. Okay, and this is this half size, I hope. Okay. Mm. And having that, we can get this random point. So now, random point within, um, within, Within component set it. Okay. So the center will be mesh bounds center. Half size will be mesh bounds half size. Random stream is random stream. Perfect. And I can set this. The additional value of setting things into variables is that we calculate this only once and then set it and forget. Uh, normally, if you have pure mm, functions that don't have the exec, the white uh, pin, they are calculated every time you connect them somewhere and they are used. So they are calculate, calculated fresh every time. So what we did here, like this and this, it will always go and with this full graph recalculate everything, wasting wasting computation time. So as an optimization, where you can set things into variables. Of course, heavier things, not trivial things. Uh, but these are, let's say, heavy enough. Okay, we're getting the random point. And now we want to send it to this custom primitive data. However, however, 
we have to move it into the component space. So um, by getting this random point, I first need to subtract the half the center. So minus and and I think now it will be good. Now it should be within the component space, not the bound space. Uh, and now random point within component here and another sequence pin. And now I could also draw it. So let's get the drawing back. So transforming to word this random point within component. And let's see. Let's see. Is it better? Is it drawing? Yes, look. It actually is in the correct pot. Oh, and Lumen is picking up the emission. So nice. Is it? Yeah. Right. So look, I move the mesh. It gets another random seed. Because my seed is based on position, right? So I move the mesh. Seed changes. But it's synchronized with the material. And that's because we have this custom primitive data here enabled. And we're sending that set custom primitive data vector free. Okay, so we have point synchronized with material. It's our fire origin. Uh, and by the way, because I can see that many of you just joined, a reminder, a regular one as always. On patreon.com slash hackard8, I have two membership uh, tires that will give you the recording of today's Twitch. So normally Twitch keeps them like seven days and then I upload every single stream to Patreons. So if you want to, you know, watch from the beginning, I recommend Patreon. Okay, uh, one thing is missing here. The radius is constant. Fire radius, right? Okay, the mask hardness is configurable as is radius. It's all the same for everyone. So what now? Now what would be perfect is to not only get a random point but also um, to provide a random radius. So what can we do? We can do a separate uh, separate one, like custom primitive data, index 5. But why? We don't need to. We already here have one wasted component, because this is only RGB, so X, Y, Z, and the A is wasted. Um, so we can pack the radius into alpha. Alpha is not 0 to 1, it's whatever we want. So let's pack it there. Uh, here, I have set custom primitive data vector free. Let's replace it with set custom primitive data vector four. And now I have to make this vector four. Make it. Make it. Like split, uh, split struct pin. This also will be split. So X, Y, Z goes to X, Y, Z. And here I will put radius. So another variable, uh, via radius, type number, and data index zero is okay. So I put this number there. And also another randomness. So here I put Take the random point in bounding box from stream. Let's also pick a random fire radius from stream. So random stream. Um, 
yeah, random stream is something like, you know, going onto Twitch, some interesting people there, you click, oh, click our date, I will see what it is. You click this random stream and here we are on my Twitch. Okay, so uh, random load in range from stream. The range of this fire will be from 40 or like 20 to uh, 80. Okay. And now this value will be different for everyone. And I put it here into W. So in the material, I don't take fire radius from here. I take it from alpha. I can do a name reroute declaration node and just add fire radius only for the fact that I know what it is. Like that. I can call it fire origin and radius. Okay. Here we go. And now, whoa, that's big. That's huge. It's zero by default, I guess. Zero by default, zero is bad. Shouldn't be zero. Because radius zero with that hardness, we also multiply it to zero. So we should clamp it to be at least something. So uh, max. So prevent it from being too small. Uh, minimum radius one centimeter or five centimeters. Still bad. Okay. Mm. Is it correct? It's setting custom primitive data. Oh, it's the opposite. <laughs> what the hell? Why? Uh, why? Actually, fire radius. Uh, something detached. Ah, fire radius detached. Okay. Now it's good. Okay. So again, let me change. Ah, because now this is... Okay, so let's say maximum will be 30. Compile. Okay, smaller, right? Minimum will be 5. And let me also draw this debug sphere with the same exact radius. So we'll see that. So take a look, fire radius. Exactly the same. So let me increase that range of randomness from 5 to 50. Yeah, but it looks very similar for everyone, which is weird. Let me add a lot of them. Who is following? Shogu, welcome. Welcome and have a good time. Okay, there's a lot of them. Now I compile. Compile, come on. Huh. This is too short. <laughs> Let's draw the sphere for five seconds. Okay. Or for 10 seconds. Right, so we can see some of them are actually small. And some of them are bigger. This is good. This is good. So, fire radius is passed through alpha in the custom primitive data. Now let me go to chat and wait, let's see this again. 
So as you can see, random points, random radiuses are passed for every component to the material like this. Uh, okay, Shogo, I don't know if you're on Discord, if not, join us. Uh, let me check what you're asking about. Um, Ah, Podkus was asking uh, what can be done with shaders. They think it's niche, not a lot of job offers. Uh, interesting about programming, knows the basic fundamentals of programming. Is it possible to get a job as a technical artist without industry experience? So I have two videos about that, uh, which I, I would like really to recommend. And one is actually on Patreon, uh, because it's the longer one. Oh, I have to unlock it myself. Oh no. Wait a second. It's called applying for a technical job. But it wants me to sign in into my own Patreon. Come on, dude. Um, okay. Wait a second. I need a way to do that. Mm. Login. Yeah. Uh, Oh no, I need to verify that. Never mind. Again. Patreon.com. Deckard 8. You will open it yourself uh, if you want. Basically, it's a, uh, I think, almost two hours uh, video about me browsing available offers and then checking which are the common skills, what are the expectations and trying to figure out like the areas of expertise. So this is the full takeout job video. I'll just paste it here. Now it says takeout. Uh, I know how to do it actually. Uh, it'll be like this, this, and these are slashes. Oh. Should be good. Yes. So this is full tech art job video. And I think it's really like, you know, uh, it tells a lot about the subject because I brought senior offers, junior offers, and compared that also to my own experience. Uh, and there's a shorter version of it. On techartate.com, there's tech art uh, artist job requirements. This one, of course, advertisement. Um, so, what there? Shorter uh, cut is here. It's like 15 minutes out of this this long one. Thank you, H&M, for advertising me. I don't know what. Uh, modeling out of cubes. Perfect. Uh, yeah, this video. So I made a map of Tekkar skills. And I put there, what are the disciplines that you'll be working with? Like graphics engineers, group programmers, animators. And the typical things you'll be doing for them or with them. And these are the disciplines. And what I did on the long video uh, on Patreon is checking in how many advertisements certain stuff was put. And was it rather for junior or for senior? So I think the results are quite surprising let's say. And there's a lot of nice specialization in AAA studios. Like for example, not rigger, but actual technical person for animation of skin and of humans and of uh, basically character effects. So yeah, uh, I recommend both. Uh, I put the link on the chat. Color Void, hello. Oh, you have great nick on Twitch, matching what you asked me uh, to show. Let me check one thing. Uh, give me a moment, I need to find one uh, thing on my private browser. Be right back. Okay, 
No recuerdo si es... So thanks for sending me this. Uh, I think if we have time, I no, maybe let's do it on the next stream. But thanks for this artful escape references. Uh, so basically the effects like this, I would only say in short for now, are all about actually bending space. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. I didn't respond. I just liked the post. Uh, so imagine. Um, that you have UVs, you have your UVs, and normally let's say this is a cylinder, right? Uh, maybe a cylinder. And typically your UVs will go like this and here, probably, right? So to one, zero, one, uh, like this, zero. Okay. Uh, so to distort stuff like that, you would actually need a very similar dot, just stretch it like this. So I don't know if this is what you asked about, but what I would just suggest uh, is both panning the UV, so adding some value. You have zero, let add time to it, like 0 0.1 over time. 1.1 over time, like 0 0.2, 1.2. Uh, so add, you just add time to one of the axes uh, and you multiply this. So you have one, let's say multiplied by 0, 0, 1. So here you will get, of course, 0, 0, 1. Somewhere next, instead of 2, you will get 0, 0, 2. So in terms of UVs, 0, 0, 1 is a very small value like this. So whatever dot was there and now it will be expanded towards here, it will just be super stretched, right? So it's like contracting the UVs by multiplying them by a small number. So this will happen probably. And then if you have some nice little noise, you can get these huge shapes and by moving them, you will see, uh, like by moving, I mean, moving, adding uh, time to, to the UVs, you will see how this all, uh, how this entire thing is like flying towards us. That's how I would do it. So. One thing is the easy technical thing of how to modify the UVs over time and stretch them. But another thing is how to prepare a very good noise to make this interesting transition, you know. The, the purple wasn't there at all. And then after some time, you can see it, yeah. The yellow, the, the sand color. So this is half of the success or even more. Is making a proper noise texture, like you know, eyeballing it, playing with it. So this is how, how I would approach the color void. As for the blending mode, I'm not sure because maybe it's an additive blend mode. Mm, definitely exposure is changed over time because here you can see the ring is darkened, especially on the top. The bright greens become dark greens. So I would say that the exposure of, of the camera is being changed like here. Like you know we have some fire there. Change the exposure. Oh sorry. Uh, like this. So definitely it's playing with that value in the post-process volume. It's called in the post-process volume it's called exposure bias. Uh, and yeah, and then you can do it, I, I think. Also, uh, there's one video, probably too old to be displayed on TechArt 8. So let's find it here. 
Let's find it here. Okay, here it is. Okay, so get this one little and take a look. It's a video about UV animation. No. Oh, and you also have this on, on Udemy, right? Should have. Uh, give me a moment. Udemy.com. Math Essentials. By the way, here's the course. The math course. If someone wants it. Uh, preview, I guess. No, no preview. I want, to, I want to watch my own course. Can I? Please. <laughs> I just want to watch my own video. Can I do this? I can't because I'm behind the paywall. Fantastic. Uh, degradate. Editing. Editing. No. Degradate. Projects. Planar V. Editing. Export. Here it is. Perfect. Okay. So what I show there, somewhere later, is this. So multiplying UVs scales UVs. Adding to UVs moves UVs. So if you add time multiplied by some speed, you're getting that. Basically, you know, flow of the river, whatever. <laughs> so this is what the video is about. And I also show how to do it. So you both have it on YouTube in the you know, old poor quality and something. Or you have it in the course as the last texture coordinates video. It's the same. Uh, but of course in the course you get much more. Yeah, add that. It's already 60% off for myself. It's an amazing deal. Oh, you started watching. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Nice that you are here because I was wondering whether, you know, when to show it, when to explain it. Mm. Okay, where were we? The things are burning in the random point with a random radius. Now I, uh, I promised you gameplay, right? So we would like these points to happen not randomly, not in some random manner, but actually where there is collision or something. Let's do it like that. Mm. And there's only one point. That's another problem. We want more. So we have two things to do now. More points, but that's for later. And making the point happen where the collision happened. So let me expand that tab a little. So that it doesn't say burning as, but it says burning asset. Thank you. Uh, show it here. And burning as, oh, duplicate. Burning asset gameplay. Okay. Do you want to save? Yes. Why won't I? Okay. Let me delete them. and place the new ones. Whoa! <laughs> it will stay there for 10 seconds. Oh no. Uh, construction scripts, perfect. I will pack that into a function. And let's call it... Let's call it... Um, draw fire origin debug and duration could be shorter two, two seconds now back to the event graph I don't care about that okay this is construction script I won't be doing this on construction script now and not random not random 
uh, I only need this. So this, it won't be called random point, it will be called fire origin within component. Mm -hmm. And all this I would pack into set fire origin and or update. No, update uh, mesh material. That's it. Uh, this can be deleted because it's randomness. This too. I don't care. Okay. So construction script will have nothing. I don't need random. I don't need nothing in construction script. Meanwhile, the gameplay. So let's say if something overlaps with this object, then at this point, at that position. So component overlap actor begin overlap yes so on beginning of overlap other actor uh, or wait can i just check component overlap actors mm. okay Wait, there's other actor. I already have that. Actor begin overlap. How to do it? I don't remember that. Mm. Overlapping. Get overlapping components. Return list of components. This actor is overlapping. This actor is overlapping. But I only want to check my own. Hmm. Is overlapping component static mesh component? Oh, that's perfect. So when something begins overlapping, then is overlapping my static mesh? If yes, then currently I will. Uh, but wait, there should be more info uh, because there's other actor. That's cool, but I want the overlap. You know, event. Hmm. Hit. Event hit. Oh, that's better. My component other. So if my component is equals static mesh component, then then get the hit location. Uh, set it so this by origin within component. This uh, hit location will be word space. So I need to transform that. So static image component get word transform and inverse transform location. So bring it back to my space, not the uh, music blogging platform. And set this by origin. Okay, and let's draw the sphere then. Draw fire origin debug. Okay. And the radius by default could be 50 or 20. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Of course, by default, nothing will work. But I need some moving actor or some shooting. Uh, okay. Let's add a sphere. Sphere, sphere. Where are the basic shapes? Essentials, meshes. 
No. Geometry? So I didn't. Okay. Cube with jumper. Perfect. Beautiful cube. Go there. Get some shiny material from. Okay. Not that's bad. Silver. Simple silver. Good. Let's add some grid to it. Good, and if it will hit this component, this should update this thing. Let's see. Ah, enable physics. So, physics simulation. Yes. It fell. And nothing happened. Nothing at all. Nothing. Uh, so wait, this has, it does, definitely has collision because it collides. Um, so what's bad here? The other comp, ah, if my component equals this, or maybe this is wrong, I'll just print that, so print, print, in this let's see doesn't print or does it it does not uh, I probably have to enable something else Simulation generate hits events must be enabled. Okay, so this simulation generates hits events. Yes. Okay. Nothing. Maybe here. Maybe it also has to simulate. Oh, physics, physics. No physics. Simulation generate hits event, hit events. Okay, perfect. So I have to enable this not here, but on this actor. So let me edit this not there, but inside the blueprint. In static mesh component details, physics, simulation, no collision. Simulation generate hits events. Yeah. And now it works. Perfect. So let me uh, update the mesh material. So I'm setting this fire origin and updating the material. Let's see. And let's disable the debug sphere for now. It's here, right? First, it's on the top when it hits, but immediately moves. So let me add some more of them, and you will see. Yeah, so all of them are getting this point on the collision. Now I move that. I can't. Again. Right? But there is one point. Just one. Of course, I can't have infinite except if I did a render target. Agent Lion Man uh, says thanks. Oh, for Discord. Glad I could catch you. Just want to say I'm a big fan of your videos, especially on performance. Oh, thank you. I'm really glad that the performance ones are still useful. Uh, when I started recording them, first, I wasn't too experienced. And second, I didn't know, you know, why there is such a void about, let's say, this topic on the internet in Unreal. Uh, 
I got Unity, it was better, but not much. So yeah, I'm glad that this is still useful. So uh, Aslan the Lion Man means means the series uh, here to come. Slash the date. And there is this playlist of uh, graphics profiling. This one. Graphics profiling. Oh, this one. So this was about how to measure performance. Why to think in milliseconds, not in FPS. Uh, and also, I tried to explain what is bound to pixel cost, what is vertex cost. So for example, more vertices, are they always bad? Mm, that, do they matter so much if your pixel shader is heavy and so on? And also, where the memory comes into all this? And I also show optimization view modes and the profilers. So one is built into Unreal, a simple one. And then there is Intel one, very good one, which can show you, for example, that the particular light took a certain time to draw. So this is uh, optimization series. Oh, Aslan is working on VR. Yeah, then performance stuff is crucial. And I would probably guess that you don't use many features of UE5, right? Because none of it is deferred and Lumen is heavy. Oh, uh, thanks for reminding about that. Okay, uh, so this and some points. Uh, I can disable printing because here they know it's good. Mm. So now, of course, if we wanted to draw into a texture, we'd need to do it on a render target. So that's not what I want to do. But what I want to do is to keep the last eight kind of hit points. Okay. Maybe not eight, maybe less. Uh, some points. So forgive me for the simplicity and for the crudeness of the solution. But I think it works. If it worked in Cyberpunk, it can work in your game. So what I would like to do is to go into the material and to, instead of having one point, look that we already packed it into a single a uh, single thing, single vector, because we have 0, 1, 2 position and 3 radius. Instead of having just one, let's add 8 or 6. Okay. Of course, the problem will be later, because how to repeat all this 8 times, like the entire fire, no. So let's not repeat that. Let's only repeat the mask and combine the mask. And the later, it will be just a single point. So bear with me. Fire mask harness, uh, right. Let's, okay, local position we need on new ones because it doesn't change. What changes is the distance and the radius and the stuff. So I'm putting it, in, it outwards, copying these nodes. There is collapse nodes, but it's not what you think. It's just hiding that. Uh, so going to this material, uh, browse, browse, uh, icons, oh, huh, fantastic views, thank you Unreal, this is super readable, uh, hex editor, I just wanted to create a material function, can I, is there empty space when I can right click and just have this nice little menu, add, okay, Thank you. <laughs> but your functions, I'm sorry. I didn't know that button. Uh, burning wood, uh, radial mask. Okay. Radial mask. Uh, let's paste these nodes. Paste them. 
this is the result. Uh, yes. Distance to it doesn't know from what. So we need a function input. It will be vector free local position. By default, it will be local position. Uh, local position, excluding offsets. And here you click use preview value as default, so it takes it. If, if you don't connect that node, it will just be this. Save this material function. And now, in the main material, you just drag and drop it here. And we have it. Burning wood radial mask. We can get rid of all this, almost all. And just put it here. Now, as you can see, we are missing some stuff because we have local position. By the way, now you can double click on that to jump into it. Uh, you can double click into everything that's blue, like even this, provided with Unreal. Uh, so we have local position, but we have only single fire origin and radius coming always from index zero, which is not helpful. So let's cut it out from here. Let's also do an input vector four. Uh, okay. Fire origin and radius like this. Or maybe even better fire origin and radius. Um, here, here, this max can be one centimeter, whatever, uh, or zero, zero, one. Uh, 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 uh. It's, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Okay, default fire origin will be zero. Default fire radius, zero. Good. Uh, so it remaps, you know, our fire radius. Basically makes a, makes a spherical mask, a single mask. We have inputs, so it's good. Save it. And now it's good. Local position should go first. So this sort prior priority zero, sort priority 10. So priority 20. I recommend these bigger numbers because if you want to add something in between, it's always easier. Uh, so now this goes here, radius goes here. Let's see if it gave us the same result. Let's check. So I, now I just packed it into a function, right? It's good. It's just one point. So now, now let's keep one local position and having this as a function, just duplicate that stuff. Fire origin and radius zero. Let's say four last points. Four last points, zero, one, two, three. Of course, remember that the index zero means zero, one, two, three. So here we need index four. Here we need index eight. Not to overlap, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and so on. We got 36 such float numbers uh, per each mesh in the world in Unreal. So it's a lot, I'd say. And the local position will be the same for all. Just like this. Saturating, uh, not necessary, I guess, because saturated here. Yes. Uh, so I not, so not saturate, just max. Max, max meaning the biggest, bigger value of both. 
So it's like a combining of these masks. I don't need that, I don't need that. Max, max. So I'm combining these masks. This one with that. This one with that one. Okay. And at the end I have no. You can also use add, but add is problematic because if one mask is there, another is overlapping, you get a too, too big value. Max is just the bigger of both. So if this is maximum one, this will also be maximum one. You will never exceed, never exceed one if it doesn't, if this doesn't. Okay, so we have fire origin radius zero, one, two, three. It's good. Save it. Of course, now the others are not doing anything. Let's just check if it still works, if we didn't break stuff. A little definitely post your progress on Discord, yes. And all of you, if you see, you know, if you want to try techniques, if you want to repeat what I did on the stream, do it. Let's talk on Discord, that's what it's for. I'm totally for discussion, for uh, pointing out my mistakes, proposing better solutions and stuff. Okay, still works. So now we just need to send these more points. So back here, there is update mesh uh, material, right? And our, uh, we don't no longer need mesh bound center and half size and random stream. Fire origin within component will be fire origins within component. Array, change variable type. So now it's a list. Yes, change it. It's good. Uh, and we on the hit. We shouldn't just that. What we should do instead is we should add one at the end of the list. And if the list is too long, remove one. Okay. So look at this. Let's disable that for now. Event hit. Hit location. There is some array of fire origins components. Initially empty. We registered a hit. So let's add one thing to it at the end. So first we're going to check if this is not already longer than four or four. Length. Length is bigger or equal to or yeah if it is in brown if it is and out of that thing mm, just pop or delete or remove remove index zero remove the first element and then, no matter if this is true or not, just add one, add point. So either this result or that result, just add this new location to them. Okay. Okay, see you Adel, thank you for being here. See ya. Mm. Color void, I think you may have to post on Discord because Twitch will cut off your links because you're not a moderator. But there is a live stream chat on, on Discord. Live stream chat for links. And yeah, uh, we can use that. Okay. Uh, and thanks for posting. Okay, so look. If there's more than four already on the list, I could actually make it a variable. Not a variable. Let's name it num points or num origins max. Number of fire origins max. It will be four. 
Mm -hmm. Let's move it to a category called settings. Just in it. A constants. Okay. So remove it and add another one. So I'm registering all these hits. And then to update the mesh material, I can actually get rid of this function. Let's delete that. Delete. Okay. So this is the first thing. And then actually let's do a sequence. Okay. So yeah, this will be back if the list is at or over max capacity. Uh, of number of points supported in material. Okay. And all this will be at a local space point onto the list. And then let's draw them. So mm, static mesh component for each point here, right? And the order doesn't matter at all. The order doesn't matter. Set custom primitive data vector four. And this should be our, our index size multiply, multiplied by four. By four, because we have four indices, uh, RGBA. Four, because of X, Y, Z, R. Okay. So setting this, and as you can see, it's so easier than setting a parameter because we don't have a name. We just have a data index. And now splitting this, uh, I'm going to also break this vector. X, Y, Z. And the fire radius is fire radius. Like this. That's it. That's totally it. Let's try now. I hope it, that's it. Oh, blueprint bad. Blueprint bad. Why is blueprint bad? Because something doesn't exist anymore. Oh no. Ah. Draw fire origin debug. Yeah. Mm. Vector location within mesh. Yeah, it's an array, exactly. So this. And now it should work. I hope. Again, let's make it more stable. Let's add one in the middle. Are there four points or just one? Looks like just one. Yeah, it moves. But maybe there are so many hits. So we can check. Mm, if this new location is far enough from the previous location. So let's go here. Let's go here. 
and and and, and check again one other thing there is remove index so there should be first a calculation made okay let's do another point in the sequence mm. this calculate the no uh transform the hit to meshes local place okay and set it into a local variable mm. it will be hit in local space Mm -hmm. This is the first thing to do. Then it should check how far it is from the previous one. So uh, if this length is bigger than zero, oh, the branch. Or no, wait, wait. Mm. Yeah, if it's bigger than zero, add one dot new pin. Then, then what? Ah, then get this hidden local space. Get the fire origins, get, get, uh, copy, of the length minus one, so the last one, and all of this, it will be back if the point is far enough from the previous from the last point so that it's worth updating okay so let's do some mean distance threshold it will be a float single and this float single, let's set it to at least 25 centimeters. Smaller than this, it's not worth updating. Uh, mean distance threshold. Uh, okay. Distance. Bigger than this. So let's set uh, a variable is worth updating boolean. So let's set it to true if there weren't any points yet. And let's set it to whatever is here when there they when there were enough points. Like this. And now, check if this is not capacity, it doesn't matter. But all of this should only happen, all of this, if it's worth updating. Branch. Okay. Then do this check. And then set custom primitive data. Ah, sequence. Like this. Otherwise, not worth doing. So this 
this thing will be a blade mesh material. At the point to the end of the list, making sure it marks uh, four elements. Okay. Let's try. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Mm, okay. Wait a second. This fire origin list, if it's bigger than zero, true, then get this, compare the distance, check if it's minimum okay, and if it's zero, then set is worth, worth updating. Cool. Then the second thing that happens, third thing is worth updating, yes. If this is over max capacity, it doesn't matter. Ah, okay. Uh, it's hit in local space. Here. Let's try now. It works. So take a look. This mesh gets several hits and all of them, one, two, they are stored. Right? So these meshes, they have multiple points of a hit. Again, like this. As you can see, if we decrease the distance, this minimal threshold, Let's do it like 15 centimeters. They should overlap properly. Uh huh. So multiple points, only four, but you know, good enough for many, many uses. And of course you can fade them out over time and stuff. It doesn't have to be so, so sharp, so harsh, but still it works. As you can see, multiple points. Now let's only make this radius softer. So we can make this bigger. Um, fire radius could be 35. And in this, in this function, fire mask hardness can be 0 0.4. Let's try now. Better, right? Much better. Okay, so that's it. As a kill dev, uh, welcome on the chat. And yeah, we did it. There is a fire. There is a fire in four points, thanks to four material functions, custom primitive data being index zero, index four, index eight, index 12. And in the BP, setting them jumping by four. So four, zero, four, eight, and setting these values and making sure that if the list is longer than four, just remove the first element. Jimmy says the uh, radius should grow in time. And hello, hello. Yeah, that'd be good. Or decrease in time, you know, like uh, losing the heat. You can not only store the radius, you could also store opacity. That'd be good. Or use a sign, yeah, to make it wiggle a little. Oh, and yeah, I think I recommend storing opacity of these points as well and decrease them every frame, every frame subtract 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then it will fade out. Okay, so we got that. So a short reminder on patreon.com slash techart8, you can get, uh, there's the second tire and the first tire. And thank you for all those who are uh, already there. I appreciate that a lot. And I'm glad that you that you like the streams. So if you got one of this, uh, second and third, 
you will get the replay of this uh, of this entire video like forever because that's that's the point of patreon like twitch only keeps them for seven days and i later upload them many of them go for youtube later but not most uh, uh not all of them it depends because youtube specific people don't always want to watch two hour long uh, streams but i know that for you it is a value to to replay a certain part Okay, so thanks a lot for being here, and see you next time. Cheers.